Welcome to Sweet Red Poppy. In today's video, I am going to be teaching you how to make two different styles of this scarf mask. Now, we are going to be working off of my fitted face mask pattern and my pleated face mask patterns. These face masks can actually be made into five different sizes. So we have toddler, child, teen, adult, and even a large adult size. Each of these masks features a casing which is for this flexible nose wire and it even has a filter pocket on the back so you can remove your wire, you can remove your liner before you wash them. It also is going to give you more of a secure fit with that wire on the top and it has t-shirt ties on the ears. The best part about these masks is that they can be worn as a scarf and when needed, the scarf can just be untucked and you can wear this stylish mask. Now, I wouldn't recommend tucking the mask back in to the scarf after you've worn it out in public. This is just so that you prevent spreading anything that your mask might have come into contact with onto your neck or your chest. For this tutorial, you will want to work with a fabric like rayon. This is because it's drapey and it's really the perfect weight for this project, but you'll also need some quilting cotton for the lining of your mask. For this tutorial, you will need a sewing machine rayon fabric, scissors or a rotary cutter and cutting mat, a safety pin, an iron and an ironing board, thread, sewing pins, 22 to 24 gauge floral wire, wire cutters, and jewelry pliers. You'll also need your pattern. The first thing you'll want to do is to print off your pattern. You want to do this by downloading the pattern to your desktop, open it up, and download it and then print it at 100% with no scaling. Immediately go ahead and measure your one by one inch square to make sure that your pattern has printed off correctly. You can either tape or glue your pattern pieces together and then cut out each pattern piece. For the fitted scarf mask, we're going to be using the rounded pattern piece and for your pleated mask, you'll want to use the rectangle pattern piece. So let's go ahead and get started on our fitted face mask. Cut out the main lining, casing, and your tie fabric. Select your desired size and cut out your mask pattern pieces. If you're planning on cutting out multiple masks, you can cut this template out of something that's a little bit sturdier. You could use a cereal box or even cardstock. Lay the fabric out in front of you and cut out a mirrored set of fabric from your main mask and for your lining. You'll want to also cut out one large square piece of fabric for the mask using the pattern piece and cut a nose filter pocket as well. Cut a one inch wide strip of t-shirt material to create your tie. Go ahead and stretch your t-shirt material out. You should have two main mask pieces, two lining mask pieces, a t-shirt tie, your scarf piece, and a casing. Press your scarf under 3 eighths of an inch and press. Turn under an additional 3 eighths of an inch and press it again. I like to use a little bit of starch just to stabilize my fabric. Sew around the entire scarf along the edge of the fold. Take your lining fabric and press it under one half inch on the side tab. Now take your main fabric and press it in one fourth of an inch and then turn it and press it over five eighths of an inch. On your lining fabric, sew along your fold one fourth inch from the folded edge. When placed together, the main and the lining folded tabs should meet each other perfectly. Now it's time to sew our mask together. Place the main mask pieces right side together and pin them. Repeat with the lining pieces of fabrics. Sew the main and lining along the curved edge using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I like to use a pair of pinking shears just to trim away my seam allowance. It's also going to allow that fabric to turn the opposite way. Open up your masks and press the seam allowance to the left. If you have a pressing hem, it's really helpful to use this right now. Now go ahead and press your nose piece casing 3 eighths of an inch under on the long side and both short sides. Align the raw edges of the casing with the raw edge of the lining. The wrong side of your casing should be facing the right side of your mask. Go ahead and pin that in place. And sew just along the bottom edge. Now place the main mask on top of your lining with the right sides together. Sew around the top and the bottom of your mask, making sure the main fabric extended tabs are open through this process. Go ahead and turn the mask right side out. 
Roll out those seams and press them with plenty of steam. Top stitch along the folded edge of the casing, leaving the short ends open. Create the casing by folding in the extended tab. Sew along the innermost fold to secure the casing in place. Now it's time to attach our mask to our scarf. Make sure that you have sewn around the entire scarf with a double rolled hem. Fold the scarf in half and mark the center point of the scarf. You want to lightly press the middle of the scarf just as a way to mark it. Open it back up and align the mask with the scarf. Sew along the edge of the mask to connect it. Now let's go ahead and thread through our casing. You can cut out a piece of wire if you prefer and the pattern piece will have your exact measurements based on the size that you're making. Turn your sharp edges inwards on both sides and insert the floral wire into the casing. Or you could use a metal nose bridge. This allows it to be easily removed before you need to wash your mask. Now you can create your ear loops a few different ways. First off, you could create a t-shirt casing that goes all the way around your head and ties in the back. To do that, attach a safety pin to the t-shirt ties and feed it upwards through the right hand side of the casing and downwards through the left hand side of your casing. This tie can be adjusted once it's placed on the wearer for a better fit. It should be tied at the base of your neck. You can also create an adjustable ear loop using pony beads. You'll want to feed your knit tie through the casing, bend a piece of wire in half and slide the pony bead onto the wire. Now go ahead and slide both ends of your knit tie in between the wire. Pull the wire to feed the bead onto your ties. Now you can adjust the ear tie using the pony bead. Now it's time to make our pleated scarf mask. Cut out two layers of cotton fabric. This is going to create your filter pocket. One layer of rayon for the outside of your mask, one square scarf piece, and a nose bridge pocket. You can cut a t-shirt tie if you'd like it to go all the way around your head. This should measure about 30 to 35 inches. Or you could cut four pieces of knit t-shirt ties and create this adjustable ear strap. It should measure about six to seven inches. Place two pieces of your cotton fabric with the right sides together. You're going to save your third piece of rayon for the next step. Place a pin in each corner of the rectangle and horizontally mark the center of the rectangle. I like to do this by just pressing my fabric in half. Now you're going to sew a straight horizontal line across your mask, leaving about a three inch opening in the middle. Align the wrong sides of the fabric together to create your filter pocket. Press the seam with a steamy iron. A filter will easily be able to be slid into this pocket at the very end of our tutorial. Iron both the bottom and the sides of the nose bridge by turning them under 3 eighths of an inch. Place the nose bridge casing with the right side facing upwards and sew just along the bottom edge. Place one piece of fabric in front of you on the table and pin your elastic or your knit ties on the top and the bottom of the short ends. This is going to create your ear loops. It should be placed about one half inch from the top and the bottom edge of the fabric. Place the last rectangle on top of the lining with right sides facing each other. Sew around the entire mask using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now go ahead and turn your mask right side out and you can use an iron to press it flat. You can also use a little needle and some thread to just gently wiggle those corners out. Go ahead and lay the mask out in front of you and we're going to create our pleat markings by folding the outside edges to the center and pressing. Create your pleat by folding the mask one half inch under, bringing your pleats towards the center of your mask. Pin the pleats in place from the front of the mask. You'll want to create a stitch starter. Now, this is a piece of fabric that's been folded to create an equal thickness to your mask. It's going to help the sewing machine to easily sew through this thicker fabric and not cause any problems for you. So you'll want to start sewing on the middle of your stitch starter and then place your mask right next to it. After sewing a few stitches on the mask, you want to backstitch and then continue sewing forward. Now, don't forget to backstitch at the end as well. Repeat this process on the opposite side of the mask. Now it's time to attach our mask to our scarf. You want to sew around the entire scarf with a double rolled hem. 
After that, fold your scarf in half and mark the center point of the scarf. I like to lightly press the middle of the scarf just to mark it, and then I align my mask with the scarf and sew along the edge of my mask with a 1 4 inch seam allowance. Now this is going to connect your mask to your scarf. Press the scarf downwards and away from the mask. Cut a piece of wire that's slightly larger than the casing. Turn the sharp edges inward on both sides. You can insert the floral wire into the casing, or you could use a metal nose bridge. Now it can easily be removed before you have to wash your mask. You can create an adjustable ear loop using a pony bead. To do this, bend a piece of wire in half and slide your pony bead onto the wire. Now go ahead and slide both ends of your knit tie in between the wire. Pull the bead to feed the bead onto the ties. Now you can adjust your ear tie using that pony bead. Now you know how to create two different styles of scarf masks. I really hope you enjoyed this video tutorial on scarf masks. And if you found it helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and give it a share. Let me know in the comments below which style of mask you prefer. If you're looking for more crafting and sewing videos, don't forget to subscribe to Sweet Red Poppy for weekly videos. I'll see you next week.